Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Welcome to another episode of the Halloween Podcast. I am your host, Lyle Perez, and today we're continuing our Haunted America series with episode number seven. The date is September 18th, 2024, and we're diving into the eerie corners of Connecticut, a state rich with history, legends, and of course, hauntings. Known as the Constitution State, Connecticut is home to some of the oldest and most chilling ghost stories in the country. So grab your EMF detectors and join me as we explore 10 of the most haunted locations in the state of Connecticut. Let's begin our journey in Hartford at the Mark Twain House. The former resident of one of the most beloved authors, Samuel Clemens, better known as Mark Twain. This grand Victorian mansion, where Twain wrote some of his most famous works, is not just a literary landmark. It's also a hotbed for paranormal activity. Built in 1874, the Mark Twain House is an architectural gem with its distinctive Gothic Revival style and intricate interiors. But beneath its beauty lies a dark story. Twain moved into the house with his family. And while it was a place of creativity and joy, it was also the site of a deep tragedy. Twain's beloved daughter Susie died of spinal meningitis in the house at just 24 years old. Her death devastated the family, and some believe her spirit never left. Visitors and staff have reported a variety of ghostly encounters over the years. The most common sighting is that of Twain himself, who is said to appear in various parts of the house, particularly in the billiard room, where he spent much of his time. Some have even reported hearing the clanking of billiard balls when the room is empty. Twain's daughter, Susie, is believed to haunt the property as well. Her presence is often felt in the nursery, where visitors have reported hearing soft sobbing and feeling an inexplainable sadness. Some have even seen her apparition, a faint figure in white moving through the hallways. The Mark Twain House is open to the public. It offers tours that dive into both the literary and the haunted history of the iconic home. Next, we head to the coast where the new London Ledge Lighthouse stands guard over the waters of the Long Island Sound. Built in 1909, this lighthouse has been the site of numerous ghostly encounters, most famously involving the spirit of a former lightkeeper named Ernie. According to legend, Ernie was a devoted lighthouse keeper who lived and worked at the lighthouse. However, when he discovered that his wife had left him for another man, He was overcome with despair. The story goes that Ernie took his own life by throwing himself from the top of the lighthouse, and his spirit has haunted the structure ever since. Keepers and Coast Guard personnel have reported hearing footsteps echoing up and down the stairs, doors opening and closing by themselves, and even seeing Ernie's apparition looking out at the sea from the lantern room. One of the most chilling experiences is hearing the faint, moaning sound of someone calling out for help in the dead of night. The lighthouse has also been the subject of paranormal investigations, with investigators capturing strange noises and inexplainable cold spots. The new London Ledge Lighthouse is still operational and is accessible through boat tours, where visitors might just encounter Ernie's restless spirit. Our next stop takes us to Woodbury, where the Curtis House Inn, Connecticut's oldest inn, 
has been welcoming guests since 1754. This historic inn, with its charming colonial architecture, has been a part of the local landscape for over two centuries, but some of these guests, it seems, have never checked out. The inn is said to be haunted by several spirits, including that of a woman believed to be the original owner's wife. She's often seen in the dining room, wearing a colonial-era dress, her apparition appearing briefly before fading away. Guests have also reported feeling sudden cold spots in their rooms, hearing disembodied voices, and even smelling the faint scent of lavender, which was the favorite perfume of a long-deceased guest. One of the most famous hauntings is in room 5, where visitors have reported the sensation of someone sitting on the bed when no one is there. Some guests have even reported being awoken by the feeling of being watched, only to see a shadowy figure standing at the foot of their bed. The inn staff have their own stories to tell, including encounters with a ghostly child who is often heard laughing or <laughs> running through the hallways. The Curtis House Inn is still open to the public, offering both cozy accommodations and a chance to experience its spectral residence. Next, we visit one of the most haunted cemeteries in the United States, Union Cemetery in Easton. Dating back to the 1700s, this graveyard is steeped in history and has also earned a reputation for being a hotspot of paranormal activity. The most famous spirit here is the White Lady, a ghostly figure who has been seen floating among the tombstones, often appearing in the dead of night. Many have reported seeing her figure glowing in the darkness, her white dress fluttering as if she moved silently through the cemetery. She's been known to appear suddenly in front of cars driving past the cemetery, only to vanish as quickly as she appeared. The White Lady's origins remain a mystery, though some believe she's the ghost of a woman who died tragically in the area. The cemetery has been the site of numerous paranormal investigations, which many capture strange lights and unexplained voices on the recordings. Some have even seen the White Lady's figure in photos they've taken at the cemetery. A ghostly silhouette is in the background. Union Cemetery is still open to the public, though it's advised to visit during the day, unless you're brave enough to encounter the White Lady under the cover of darkness. In Derby, we find the historic Sterling Opera House, a grand old building that opened its doors in 1889. Once a bustling center for the arts, the Opera House has been closed to the public for decades, but some say it's never truly empty. The ghostly activity at the Sterling Opera House is varied as it is frequent. Visitors have reported hearing the sound of footsteps on the stage, as if actors from long ago are still rehearsing their lines. Others have seen the apparition of a young boy sitting in the balcony, watching the stage intently before disappearing into the shadows. The boy, believed to be the spirit of a child who died in the building, is often described as wearing early 20th century clothing and is known to be quite playful, sometimes moving objects or tugging at visitors' clothes. The sound of music seemingly coming from nowhere has been heard echoing through the empty halls. Paranormal investigators have captured EVPs of disembodied voices and strange orbs of light in their photos. Some have even felt the presence of a stern man, possibly a former stage manager, who seems to keep a watchful eye on the building. Though the Sterling Opera House is currently closed for renovations, it's occasionally open for paranormal tours, offering a glimpse into its haunted past. For our next haunted location, we venture into the dark woods of Cornwall to a place known as Dudley Town, a deserted settlement with a reputation so terrifying it's often called the Village of the Damned. Founded in the mid-1700s, Dudley Town was plagued by misfortune from the beginning. 
Families who settled there experienced strange deaths, disappearances, and what many believe to be a curse brought over by the Dudley family from England. The Dudleys were said to be descendants from English nobility, who were disgraced and cursed, leading to generations of bad luck. This curse followed them to America, where their settlement, Dudley Town, became a place of despair. The area is now an abandoned ghost town, overtaken by the forest, but those who dare to visit report an overwhelming sense of dread and unease. Paranormal investigators have experienced equipment malfunctions, sudden temperature drops, and unexplained sounds echoing through the trees. Some have even claimed to see shadowy figures lurking just out of sight, watching their every move. There are also reports of strange lights in the woods and the feeling of being followed by something unseen. Dudley Town is on private property and is officially closed to the public, but its dark legend continues to draw the curious and the brave. Back on the coast, we arrive at the Lighthouse Inn in New London, a once grand hotel that's now steeped in ghostly tales. Built in 1902 as a summer home, the inn later became a popular hotel, but it's the tragic stories tied to its past that have left a lingering presence. The most famous spirit at the Lighthouse Inn is that of a bride who was killed in a tragic accident on her wedding day. The story goes that the bride, excited to celebrate her marriage, ran to the window to greet her husband as he arrived at the inn. However, in her haste, she tripped, fell out the window, and died from her injuries. Her ghost, dressed in a white gown, is often seen wandering the grounds, particularly near the water's edge. Guests have reported hearing her weep late at night and some have even seen her standing in the ballroom, as if waiting for a dance that never came. There are also reports of unexplained cold spots in the inn, objects moving on their own, and the eerie sound of footsteps echoing through empty hallways. The hotel closed to the public in 2008, but plans for its restoration have been in the works, leaving the question open, will the spirits be disturbed by the changes? Or will they welcome the return of the living? Our next haunted destination is the old Newgate Prison in East Granby, which dates back to 1705 and originally served as a copper mine before being converted into a prison. It was one of the first prisons in America and its conditions were notably harsh. The underground tunnels, once used for mining and later as cells, are said to be haunted by the spirits of former prisoners who endured unimaginable suffering. The prison's history is filled with tales of escaped attempts, brutal conditions, and even a few executions. The most notorious spirit is that of a man named Lightfoot, a prisoner who attempted to escape but was recaptured and ultimately died within the prison walls. Visitors have reported hearing the clanking of chains, disembodied voices, and the sound of moaning echoing through the dark tunnels. Some have felt a cold hand brush against them, or seen shadowy figures darting between the cells. The prison is now a museum and is open to the public, where you can explore its eerie history and perhaps come face to face with the spirits of its past. In Newtown, we find the abandoned Fairfield Hills State Hospital, which operated from 1931 to 1995. Like many old psychiatric hospitals, it has a dark history, and it's said that the spirits of former patients still roam the halls. The hospital was notorious for its harsh treatments including electroshock therapy and lobotomies, which caused many patients to die within its walls. The sprawling campus, now abandoned, 
is filled with decaying buildings that once housed thousands of patients. Visitors have reported hearing screams, seeing apparitions in hospital gowns, and feeling an overwhelming sense of despair. Some have even heard the sound of rattling gurneys and the distant echoes of voices calling out for help. There are also reports of shadowy figures that move through the darkened corridors, appearing briefly before disappearing into the gloom. The hospital grounds are now part of a public space. Though the buildings themselves are closed, yet the stories of what happened there continue to haunt the area. The tragic history and the lingering energy of those who suffer there make Fairfield Hills a place of both fascination and fear. Our final stop brings us to Mystic, home of the historic Captain Daniel Packer Inn, which dates back to the 1750s. This charming inn and tavern is filled with history, but it's also home to a few spirits that have made themselves known over the years. The inn was built by Captain Daniel Packer, a prominent figure in Mystic's early days, and it served as a gathering place for sailors, merchants, and locals. The most well-known ghost is that of Captain Packer himself, who is often seen in the tavern, particularly near the fireplace where he liked to sit. Guests have reported seeing his apparition dressed in colonial attire, appearing briefly before disappearing into the shadows. Some have even felt a cold breeze pass by, as if the captain himself is still keeping watch over his inn. Another spirit that haunts the inn is that of a young girl, believed to be the daughter of one of the inn's early inhabitants. She's often seen in one of the upstairs rooms, her laughter echoing through the halls at night. Some guests have reported waking up to see her standing by their bed, only to watch her vanish into thin air. Objects in the inn are known to move on their own, and some visitors have felt a tap on their shoulder, only to turn around and find no one there. The Captain Daniel Packer Inn is still open to the public, offering a warm meal, a cozy stay, and perhaps a ghostly encounter with the spirits of the past. And that wraps up our haunted tour of Connecticut. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode. I really hope you guys are enjoying this Haunted America tour because, believe me, it is a lot, a lot of work. And uh, I really appreciate you guys listening. So if you can, if you're enjoying, please, 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 please leave the podcast a five-star review. It would really mean a lot to me. And also, it would really help the podcast by... Uh, getting it into more listeners' field of view. So please, don't wait any longer. Leave me a five-star review on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Please take a second right now and leave us a five-star review. If you have any questions, comments, or want to suggest anything for a future show, please send me an email to halloweenpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to support the Halloween podcast, you really enjoy what I'm doing here on the show, please go to our website, thehalloweenpodcast.com. Go to our merch store, order some merch. Everything on there is relatively inexpensive. You, I got stickers up there. I got some really cool postcards. I got shirts. Please order some stuff. And uh, yeah, it would really help out the show. It really helps pay for like production costs and all of those things. So go to the website thehalloweenpodcast.com go to our merch store and st get, get to ordering and don't forget to go to our facebook page facebook.com slash the halloween podcast i post a lot of cool stuff there so please go there like our page all right so that's going to do it for this episode and i will see you guys again tomorrow because i think we are on our way to delaware i'll see you then have a good night